morning. Nice to be here. Midweek prayer meeting. Have you guys had a good week so far? Yes. Good. So let's continue with our study, um, Christ Optic Lessons. And I wonder if I didn't bring my glass. <clears throat> so we have just a few more pages to finish and didn't really want to go on to something else since it's been such a good study and there's lots left to go over. Do you not hear me? Okay, so chapter 29, page 414 is where we're at. Yeah, if that correlates with your guys' books or whatever you're following in. Um, let's see. So the end of 413 says, saddest of all words that ever fell on moral ears are those words of doom. I know you're not. Do you see that? And then the beginning of my 414 says, we cannot be ready to meet the Lord by, waiting, by waking when the cry is heard. Okay. Okay, so then um, let's continue with that. So, we cannot be ready to meet the Lord by waking when the cry is heard. Behold the bridegroom, and then gathering up our empty lamps to have them replenished. We cannot keep Christ apart from our lives here, and yet be fitted for his companionship in heaven. So we have to be prepared before he comes back, right? That's our work to do here, is to work on our characters. In the parable, the wise virgins had oil in their vessels with their lamps. Their light burned with undimmed flame through the night of watching. It helped to swell the illumination for the bridegroom's honor. Shining out in darkness, it helped to illuminate the way to the home of the bridegroom to the marriage feast. So the followers of Christ are to shed light into the darkness of the world. Through the Holy Spirit, God's word is a light as it becomes a transforming power in the life of the receiver. By implanting in their hearts the principles of His Word, the Holy Spirit develops in men the attributes of God. <coughs> Anybody have any comments so far? In the light of His glory, His character, is to shine forth in His followers. Thus they are to glorify God, to lighten the path to the bridegroom's home, to the city of God, to the marriage supper of the Lamb. The coming of the bridegroom was at midnight, the darkest hour. So the coming of Christ will take place in the darkest period of this earth's history. The days of Noah and Lot pictured the condition of the world just before the coming of the Son of Man. And I think that's happening right now. It just seems like every day things are just worse and worse and, you know, the different storms and stuff that are taking place across the country right now. Um, it just seems like things are really heading that direction quickly. The scriptures pointing forward to this time declare that Satan will work with all power and with all deceive, deceivableness of unrighteousness. 2 Thessalonians 2, 9 and 10. His work is plainly revealed by the rapidly increasing darkness, the, multi, the multitudinous errors, heresies, and delusions of these last days. Not only is Satan leading the world captive, but his deceptions are leavening the professed churches of our Lord Jesus Christ. The great apostasy will develop into darkness deep as midnight, impenetrable as sackcloth of hair. To God's people it will be a night of trial, a night of weeping, a night of persecution for the truth's sake. But out of that night of darkness God's light will shine. He causes the light to shine out of darkness. When the earth was without form and void, the darkness was upon the face of the deep. The Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters, and God said, Let there be light, and there was light. 
Genesis 1, 2, and 3. So in the night of spiritual darkness, God's word get, goes forth, let there be light. <coughs> to his people, he says, arise, shine, for thy light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon thee. Behold, says the scripture, the darkness shall cover the earth, and gross darkness the people. But the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. It is the darkness of misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world. Men are losing their knowledge of his character. It has been misunderstood and misinterpreted. At this time, a message from God is to be proclaimed. A message illuminating in its influence and saving in its power. His character is to be made known. Into the darkness of the world is to be shed the light of his glory, the light of his goodness, mercy, and truth. Okay, Kamran, you have a comment? No. Hello, hello? Okay, there we one. go. All right, so um, is the darkness of misapprehension of God that is enshrouding the world. So it's really, really important to understand who God is to get to know his character. I think that is the cause of all, if most if not all, sin. Because that's what, that's what it was in the Garden of Eden. A uh, misapprehension of God's character. Like, God's withholding something good from me. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to eat this fruit. Because um, this is, like, it looks good. But, mm -hmm. um, see, that was a misapprehension of God's character. Because he withholds nothing good from his children. Um, so, yeah, that... When people really understand who God is, I think that will bring about a change in their lives. Because a lot of yeah. what we do, if not all of what we do, um, or how we see the world is like connected to how we view God. Um, and another thing, he causes the light to shine out of darkness. So darkness is the opposite of light. And so like there's no hopeless case. As long as there's life, there's hope. God can make light shine out of the darkest individual, the darkest situation, the darkest circumstance. And yeah, so praise the Lord for that. Amen. Yeah, and the two can't dwell together, right? Light and darkness can't dwell together. You either have one or you have the other. Yeah, and so that is our duty, is to reflect God's character in all that we do and all that we say. And um, so just like the pastor and Candace, you know, he's looking at it now at the standpoint of at least they were able to share Christ with those down there. And and hopefully, and he, they, both of them did, you know, a good work while they were in prison or in jail. So hopefully what they went through now and who they were able to witness to, that'll make a difference, you know, later on. Anyone else have any comments? Okay, Sister Maria. Yeah, um, I think that that's interesting. Um, that made me think, like, how we view God, that's how, no, how we view the world and how we, um, uh, how can I say, how we, yeah, how we, um, how can I say, how, how we treat the world or how we view the world, that's how we um, think about God. That's the, the um, how can I say, it? Um, I, I had it in my mind, but I don't know how to explain. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, like how, how we think about God is how we view the world. Something like that. Yeah, how our actions will yes. right demonstrate to the world how yes, we feel about God. Yes, that's that's how we we think mm -hmm. about God. That's how um, we know God, or something like that. Mm -hmm. The copy machine repairman came over today, and we got to talking about 
blowing up the dams and wearing out the roads. So stupid. Pennies and Sears and whatever clothes came out. Um, it looked like the world is coming to an end. United States was really blessed and now it is falling apart. We were thinking how bad it was, but we know it's going to get a lot worse. Mm -hmm. And very little people are going to love Jesus. Most of them are side with Satan. And so our courage, when they are nailing nails in our hands, we need to say, God, forgive them. Mm -hmm. We have a part to play, a part to learn. We better be ready because it's going to get worse. And we need to be ready in the hearts. Mm -hmm. Amen. I hope I can explain myself on what I'm trying to say, but um, today I was, uh, and it was not today, I think uh, it's been a couple of days that I've been watching this um, Joseph movie with Amaris. She loves it, and something that really stuck to me is, like you mentioned with Pastor and Sister Candace, how many times did um, Joseph went into jail? He was sold as a slave, and he thought that, he, I mean, that God wasn't even, like, listening to him or wasn't even with him until he realized that he was um, going through this trial for a reason, for a bigger reason. So that gives me a lot of hope, and, and it helps me to stand up and say, okay, God, you have a bigger plan for um Pastor and Sister Candace, mm -hmm. we don't know what's, um, how long it's going to take to see it, uh, who's going to see it, but it doesn't matter because he has a plan for this. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that's something that really has been like in my mind all day and just today and today, mm -hmm. <laughs> so praise God for that. Yeah, we just need to keep them in our prayers. Yes, yeah, like Joseph, you know, when he was first taken to Egypt, he didn't know what was going to happen, right? You know, and he, there for a moment, he really was just out of his mind almost with fear, and then he decided he was going to follow God, but yeah, he didn't know, and then he went to prison, like he mentioned, and how long was he there, you know, and he didn't know when he was going to get out, you know, so it's the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we don't know. My sister was talking to me about my opinion on medical care. And I told her, God has a thousand ways to help us. We think we have to do it ourselves. But no, we are supposed to go to God. Okay, well, we'll continue on if we don't have any other comments. Okay, so his character is to be made known. Into the darkness of the world is to be shed the light of his glory, the light of his goodness, mercy, and truth. This is the work outlined by the prophet Isaiah in the words, O Jerusalem, that bringest good tidings, lift up thy voice with strength, lift it up, be not afraid. Say unto the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God will come with strong hand, and his arm shall rule for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his work before him. Isaiah 49 and 10. Those who wait for the bridegroom's coming are to say to the people, Behold your God. The last rays of merciful light, the last message of mercy to be given to the world is a revelation of his character of love. That's what Kamran was talking about. You know, how do you view God? Do you view him as a loving God? Or is he looking to, you know, to get you on one, one point or another? 
The children of God are to manifest, manifest His glory. In their own life and character, they are to reveal what the grace of God has done for them. The light of the Son of Righteousness is to shine forth in good works, in words of truth and deeds of holiness. Christ, the outshining of the Father's glory, came to the world as its light. He came to represent God to men. And of him it is written that he was anointed with the Holy Ghost and with power and went about doing good. And I think we can be led by God, you know, to go about and, and do those good things as well. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He hath sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach the deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Luke 4, 18 and 19. This was the work he commissioned his disciples to do. Ye are the light of the world, he said. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works, and glorify your Father which is in heaven. Matthew 5, 14 and 16. This is the work which the prophet Isaiah describes when he says, it is, is it not to deal thy bread to the hungry? And that thou bring the poor that are cast out to thy house, when thou seest the naked that thou cover him, and that thou hide not thyself from thine own flesh, then shall thy light break forth as the morning, and thine hell shall speed or spring forth speedily, and thy righteousness shall go before thee. The glory of the Lord shall be thy reward. Isaiah fifty eight, seven and eight. Thus in the night of spiritual darkness, God's glory is to shine forth through his church in lifting up the bowed down and comforting those that mourn. All around us are heard the wails of the world's sorrow. On every hand are the needy and distressed. It is ours to aid in relieving and softening life's hardships and misery. Practical work will have far more effect than mere sermonizing. We are to give food to the hungry, clothing to the naked, and shelter to the homeless. And we are called to do more than this. The wants of the soul, only the love of Christ can satisfy. If Christ is abiding in us, our hearts will be full of divine sympathy. The sealed fountains of earnest Christ-like love will be unsealed. God calls not only for our gifts for the needy, but for our cheerful countenance, our hopeful words, our kindly hand clasps. And I think each one of us can do that, right? Don't have to preach a sermon. But it's just your everyday, how you interact with those around you, right? Amen. To show God's love and character. Sister Medjid, did you have a comment? Yeah, I was thinking about the demoniacs. Went away happy. And the rich young ruler went away sad. We think, yeah, we do this, we do that. We can check off everything. We're good. God will like us and we'll have a place in heaven. We might go away sad. We don't want to go away sad. Mm -hmm. So what was the difference between those two? So you talked about the rich young ruler and you talked about the... The demoniacs mm -hmm. had nothing to lose. They could only gain from God. The rich and ruler did not want to lose any of his worldly things. Mm -hmm. We are to help the poor, the homeless, the naked, the blind. But maybe we don't want to. The demoniac was very happy to help. He had been given up. And he wanted to give all. Do we want to give all or are we selfish? <laughs> I mm -hmm. hope not. <laughs> yeah, and the demoniac, he was, you know, in prison, right? And Christ released him from, from prison, essentially. But yeah, one had Christ and the other didn't have Christ, right? The rich young ruler didn't. He wanted the world rather than Christ. And then the demoniac, he accepted Christ. Our ticket to heaven is how much we help 
other people. Not what we get for ourselves, how we control our tongue, our appetite, our passions, our mind. Yes, that's important in our character development. We have to have good characters, but we don't save ourselves. God does. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what's the motive behind what we do, right? What's the motive behind our actions? Yeah. So if it's the right motive, our characters will be changed, right? If we're just mm -hmm. doing it for, you know, outward appearance or whatever the other case may be, if it's a benefit to us. But if we're doing it for the right reason, it's going to change our character. Mm -hmm. Okay, shall we go on? <clears throat> God calls not only for our gifts for the needy, but for our cheerful countenance, our hopeful words, our kindly hand clasps. When Christ healed the sick, he laid his hands upon them. So should be or so should we come in close touch with those whom we seek to benefit. Makes me think of Anita when she's with her patients, she tells me that she usually gives them a hug or, you know, something when they're leaving. And I think that's very important. You know, it is that touch. You can, you know, you can tell someone what they need to do to be healthier, but yet, and then just send them away. It's like, well, you know, you can go that extra step and show them that you really care through just the touch, you know, or the tone of your voice. There are many from whom hope has departed. Bring back the sunshine to them. Many have lost their courage. Speak to them words of cheer. Pray for them. There are those who need the bread of life. Read to them from the word of God. Upon many is a soul sickness which no earthly balm can reach nor physician heal. Pray for these souls. Bring them to Jesus. Tell them that there is a balm in Gilead and a physician there. So when you read through those, what does that say to you guys? What do you see involved in that? Mm-hmm. Yeah, to me what I see is, you know, speak to them words of cheer, pray for them, read to them. Um, so all of that takes our time, right? So if we're so busy doing whatever we feel like we want to do or need to do to be a success in our jobs or whatever else, you know, um, is that taking more of our time than giving it to others? you know, to help them where they're at. Uh, it reminds me of last Friday. Last Friday, um, Jillian had an appointment for a dental appointment, and then we were going to take her shopping. Well, there was a young man that did not have a place to stay at night, <clears throat> and uh, we invited him over and had lunch. And then I was praying how I could help him because they knew he had a bus ticket out on Sabbath morning at 6 o'clock. Yeah. And so I prayed about it, and I reached out to him, and I told him I could take him to the bus station. And um, But on Friday, before he left on Sabbath morning to the bus, uh, to the bus station, I was praying if I could reach out and help him out. And I'm driving in Lewiston. Of course, there's a lot of places he could be. And I prayed, and the Lord had me go down the right street to find him. I picked him up. I took him over to uh, Clarkston to the thrift store over there. He figured they could, might be able to help him out with some things. Well, I took Julian shopping. Then I came back, picked him up, and uh, brought him back to Lewiston. And I'm asking God, what else can I do? What, you know, besides feed him, uh, give him a ride to the bus station and the Lord impressed me to bring him here because he didn't really have a lot of clothes on him. We went to Dorcas. He found like a brand new pair of blue jeans. Mm, good. And then I remembered I had brought food here, canned goods, here when we were uh, getting them from the uh, food bank. So I opened up a couple of cans. There had been enough lettuce left over from the Sabbath before 
He had a big salad. We got him a can of olives. He had cans of beans. He was happy. <laughs> he was full. I'm sure. And then I packed him a breakfast for the next day uh, before I left to go pick him up at the uh, pick him up where he had stayed the night before. And I asked the Lord, "What else? What else?" And there was health, uh, a health and happiness booklet right there to put into the bag where the food was so that when I sent him off, we had prayer before he left. And Amen. I just was praising God that there's little things that we can do. Even if it doesn't seem like a lot, there's little things that we can do. Amen. So when I was reading, uh, when we were reading this part, I remember of something that um, I had a conversation with someone um, about when I was coming um, to church, when I first learned about Seventh-day Adventist. And there was some things like, you know, every, every human part of us are looking for something that um, we don't like, so to use it as an excuse so we can go away. Um, so I saw something that really discouraged me a lot. And as I was talking to this person, um, this person said to me, you know what? We are all humans. We are trying our best, just like you are trying right now. You still fail. And God still loves you. And this person said to me, can I please ask you a favor? I said, yeah, sure. What is it? Pray for those people that, um, that you feel like they, they let you down. Or if you ever see your pastor or anyone in your church that is doing something wrong, don't judge them. Just pray for them. That's the best thing that you can ever do for someone. And so this little pas passage um, brought me back to that conversation. And I'm thinking, who am I to say, okay, you did this wrong. I don't have faith in Christianity anymore. Um, when I know that I'm failing and that I'm... Uh, walking, stumbling all the time, and I need someone to come and pray for me so that I can have a strain and keep on going. Amen. Okay. Light is a blessing, a universal blessing, pouring forth its treasures on a world unthankful unholy, demoralized. So it is with the light of the sun of righteousness. The whole earth, wrapped as it is in the darkness of sin and sorrow and pain, is to be lighted with the knowledge of God's love. From no sect, rank, or class of people is the light shining from heaven's throne to be excluded. The message of hope and mercy is to be carried to the ends of the earth. <clears throat> whosoever will may reach forth and take hold of God's strength and make peace with him and he shall make peace no longer are the heathen to be wrapped in midnight darkness the gloom is to disappear before the bright beams of the sun of righteousness the power of hell has been overcome but no man can impart that which he himself has not received in the work of God humanity can origin originate nothing no man can by his own effort make himself a light bearer for God. That to me is encouraging. Right? So the responsibility really isn't on us without the power of the Holy Spirit. It was the golden oil emptied by the heavenly messengers into the golden tubes to be conducted from the golden bowl into the lamps of the sanctuary that produced a continuous bright and shiny light. It is the love of God continually transferred to man that enables him to impart light into the hearts of all who are united to God by faith the golden oil of love flows freely to shine out again in good works in real heartfelt service for God in the great and measureless gift of the Holy Spirit we are can Holy Spirit are contained all of heaven's resources it is not because of any restriction on the part of God that the riches of his grace do not flow earthward to men. If all were willing to receive, all would become filled with his spirit. 
It is the privilege of every soul to be a living channel through which God can communicate to the world the treasures of His grace, the unsearchable riches of Christ. There is nothing that Christ desires so much as agents who will represent to the world His spirit and character. There is nothing that the world needs so much as the manifestation through humanity of the Savior's love. All heaven is waiting for channels through which can be poured the holy oil to be a joy and blessing to human hearts. Christ has made every provision that his church shall be a transformed body, illuminated or illumined with the light of the world, possessing the glory of Emmanuel. It is his purpose that every Christian shall be surrounded with a spiritual atmosphere of light and peace. He desires that we shall reveal his own joy in our lives. The indwelling of the Spirit will be shown by the outflowing of the heavenly love. The divine fullness will flow through the consecrated human agent to be given forth to others. The Son of Righteousness has healing in his wings, Malachi 4.2. So from every true disciple is to be diffused an influence for life, courage, helpfulness, and true healing. The religion of Christ means more than the forgiveness of sin. It means taking away our sins and filling the vacuum with the graces of the Holy Spirit. It means divine illumination, rejoicing in God. It means a heart emptied of self and blessed with the abiding presence of Christ. When Christ reigns in the soul, there is purity, freedom from sin. The glory, the fullness, the completeness of the gospel plan is fulfilled in the life. The acceptance of the Savior brings a glow of perfect peace, perfect love, perfect assurance. The beauty and fragrance of the character of Christ revealed in the life testifies that God has indeed sent His Son into the world to be its Savior. Any comments? Christ does not bid His followers to strive to shine. He says, let your light shine. If you have received the grace of God, the light is in you. Remove the obstructions and the Lord's glory will be revealed. The light will shine forth to penetrate and dispel the darkness. You cannot help shining within the range of your influence. The revelation of his own glory in the form of humanity will bring heaven so near to men that the beauty adorning, their, or adorning the inter, inner temple will be seen in every soul in whom the Savior dwells. Men will be captivated by the glory of an abiding Christ, and in the currents of praise and thanksgiving from the many souls thus won to God, glory will flow back to the great giver. Arise, shine, for thy light is come, and the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. To those who go out to meet the bridegroom is this message given. Christ is coming with power and great glory. He is coming with his own glory and with the glory of the Father. He is coming with all the holy angels with him. While all the world is plunged in darkness, there will be light in every dwelling of the saints. They will catch the first light of his second appearing. The unsullied light will shine from his splendor and Christ the Redeemer will be admired by all who have served him while the wicked flee from his presence. Christ's followers will rejoice. Will rejoice. The patriarch Job, looking down to the time of Christ's second advent, said, Whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not a stranger. To his faithful followers, Christ has been a daily companion and familiar friend. They have lived in close contact and constant communion with God. <coughs> Anybody have any things to add? By beholding, we become changed. Upon them the glory of the Lord has risen. In them the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ has been reflected. Now they rejoice in the undimmed rays of the brightness and glory of the King and His Majesty. They are prepared for the communion of heaven, for they have heaven in their hearts. With uplifted heads, with the bright beams of the Son of Righteousness shining upon them, with rejoicing that the redemption draweth nigh, they go forth to meet the bridegroom, saying, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him, and he will save us. Isaiah 25, 9. And they heard, as it were, the voice of great multitude, and as the voice of many waters, and as the voice of mighty thundering, saying, 
Alleluia, for the Lord God omnipotent reigneth. Let us be glad and rejoice and give honor to him, for the marriage of the Lamb is come, and his wife hath made herself ready. And he saith unto me, Right blessed are they which are called unto the marriage supper of the Lamb. He is Lord of lords, King of kings, and they are with him are and they that are with him are called and chosen and faithful. Revelation nineteen six through nine seventeen and verse fourteen. Anybody have anything to add? It's like the flood. Come, come. He is telling us, come, come to his marriage. Are we going to? If only eight got on the boat, how many will come to the marriage? It says there will be a multitude of voices. They don't come from the earth. They come from around <laughs> I don't know where but um, we have to be prepared to stand alone to be different be mocked and say no it had never rained sighing it says it won't rain we have to be ready to get down dark and come mm hmm Okay, well, if there's not any other comments, I guess we can close a little bit earlier. Do we try to close by 7.15 normally, or? Okay. Yeah, thank you for your participation. So is there any, oh, go ahead, Sister Maria. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share um, um, something that I thought that it was very interesting um, somebody shared it and I, I really like how, how it says it's, it's a quote I believe it's found in um, R. H. I, I, I think it is Review and Herald December 3rd 1888, 1889 and it says um, the soul that the soul that loves God loves to draw strength from him by constant communion with him when it becomes the habit of the soul to converse with God, the power of the evil one is broken. For Satan cannot abide near the soul that draws, draws nigh unto God. So it's by constant, constantly um, communing with God that we're going to overcome. Mm -hmm. That's how we're going to overcome Satan, by constantly being in communion with God. And that's how we're going to get his strength, constantly mm -hmm. communing with him. Amen. One step at a time. One step at a time. If we don't keep walking, we won't get on the boat or get, come to the marriage feast. We have to keep walking. The path of the justice is a shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect day where you stop the light stops when you continue the light continues. it's a building of the faith right yes. so is there any topic that you guys would like to discuss the next time anything you want to read the next time i think pastor's probably on the next week and then i think i'm on after that the 23rd so if you guys have any ideas you can you know text me or whatever and through messenger and okay shall we close with prayer Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for what we've studied tonight. 
Lord, I just ask that each one of us will surrender to you um, on a daily basis, moment by moment, Lord, for we know that this is what we need to do in order to grow more like you. Lord, we want our characters to reflect you. We want to be a good witness to those that we come in contact with every day. Lord, for we want to shine um, out. We want to shine and show your love and glory to those around us. Lord, I just ask that each one of us will work to that end um, with the help of the Holy Spirit. Lord, please be with the pastor and Candace um, as they go through another time of testing, you know, um, through the results of, of the trial. Um, help them, help their faith to be strong, and that they will hold tight onto you, and that their faith will increase. Um, I just ask that you will be with them in a special way and send an extra measure of the Holy Spirit to them. Lord, be with each one of us as we now depart from here. Um, just ask that you will bring us all together again on Sabbath, and then as we are out there um, amongst others, that we will let our light shine. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen.